Hello back again on the Top Recap channel. This time I will tell a movies entitled A Score to Settle. Let's get straight into the storyline. The story begins by showing a group of gangsters torturing someone in a warehouse. Apparently the person has a debt to the leader of the gangster, but he has not paid the debt for a long time. Initially, they did not intend to finish the person, but only scared him by torturing him. The gangster chief tortured him with a baseball, but accidentally, the baseball bounced out of the warehouse. The gangster chief ordered his right-hand man, Frank, to pick up the baseball, but when Frank entered the warehouse, he was surprised to see that the gangster chief had killed the man. They then left the place while Frank was ordered to clean up the body. Soon, the police arrived and arrested Frank for murder. Frank was deliberately framed by the gangster chief, and now, he must be imprisoned. The scene moves to 19 years later. At this time, Frank looks like an old grandfather. Frank had to accept a sentence of 19 years in prison after being framed by the gangster chief. Frank will be released today, and he looks very happy, because he will meet his family again. After walking quite far from the prison, Frank meets a young man named Joey, who turns out to be Frank's son. Joey apologized because he couldn't pick Frank up by car and could only pick him up on foot. While Frank was in prison, Joey had to treat his mother, who was very sick. So Joey was forced to sell the house and car that Frank had. But Joey's mother or Frank's wife still couldn't be saved, and she had to die. Hearing that story, Frank could only apologize to Joey. Then, they continued their journey. Frank asks Joey to take him to their old house the next day. Joey refused because the house had been sold, but Frank just wanted to take some money and something that he had buried in the backyard. In the end, Joey took Frank to his old house by taxi. Arriving there, Frank immediately went to the backyard and dug the ground. Then Frank took some money that he had buried along with the baseball bat that the chief gangster used to finish off his victims. It looks like a lot of money, almost $2 million. Frank obtained all this money from robbing banks when he was still the right hand of the chief gangster. Then Frank returned to the taxi and invited Joey to come with him and start a new luxury life. Don't you see? Frank then rented a VIP room at a luxury hotel. Arriving there, Frank and Joey were very happy because now they could enjoy life in luxury. Joey asks Frank not to take revenge on the gangster chief who had framed him. However, Frank does not answer Joey's words. Instead, he invites Joey to shop for luxury watches. Not only that, Frank also bought Joey a new cell phone and sports car so that he would not be humiliated by his friends. In the evening, Frank invites Joey to dinner at a fancy restaurant. At that place, Frank accidentally saw a sexy woman sitting not far from his table. <laughs> Joey, who realized that his father had not been in contact with women for a long time, let his father if he wanted to approach the woman. In the end, Frank invites the woman, who turns out to be Simone, to get acquainted. Simone is known to be a widow. She looks interested in Frank. So that night, they go straight to the hotel to have fun together. After being satisfied enough, Frank immediately drove Simone home, and he promised to see her again the next day. In the evening, without Joey's knowledge, Frank quietly went to the house of his former gangster partner, Sleepy. Frank's goal is to buy weapons because Sleepy is an illegal arms dealer. But when he arrived, Frank's former partner's house was already inhabited by thugs, and it turned out that Frank's partner had died five years ago. But there, Frank met Sleepy's daughter, who has now grown up. Without waiting any longer, Frank bought illegal weapons from Sleepy's daughter. After that, Frank went to his former gangster colleague, Quentin. Quentin, who saw Frank free from prison, apologized and said he did not interfere with the head of the gangster framing Frank. Quentin immediately left the gangster after learning Frank had been framed. Frank didn't mind that because he believed that Quentin was a good person. Frank's purpose in coming to that place was only to ask where the head of the gangster was now. Quentin swears that he doesn't know and only knows that until now, the head of the gangster has been recruiting two of their colleagues who used to frame Frank. After getting that information, Frank immediately planned to return to the hotel. But before that, Quentin had invited Frank to his daughter's wedding, which will be held in one week. The next day, Frank was seen panicking because Joey was not in his room. But after shouting loud enough, Joey finally came, and he was just looking around downstairs at the hotel. Joey asked his father not to overdo it with him because Joey was an adult. Frank replied that he loved Joey so much that he didn't want to lose Joey. In the evening, Frank went to where two of his former colleagues had hung out. After a long search, Frank finally found one of them, Jimmy. Frank immediately put a gun to Jimmy's head, then asked where the head of the gangster was now. Jimmy, who did not want to open his mouth, immediately fought Frank until a fistfight broke out. 
After a long fight, Jimmy managed to escape. The next day, Frank prepared weapons to hunt down Jimmy and Tank. But here, he had to be noticed by Joey. So Joey immediately scolded Frank. Joey doesn't want Frank to take revenge because it won't solve the problem. But Frank insisted, saying that they were the ones who had made Joey suffer for 19 years. Frank kept going, and this time, he went to one of his former colleagues named Tank who was disguised as a meat seller. Seeing Frank come up to him scared Tank. Tank immediately apologized for having helped frame Frank in the past. Frank then asked where the gangster leader and Jimmy were, but Tank swore that he didn't know about Jimmy's whereabouts, but he knew the whereabouts of the gangster chief. Tank said that the gangster chief was seriously ill and was admitted to a nursing home. After giving that information, Tank hoped that Frank would forgive him, but Frank did not hesitate to kill Tank immediately. Shortly after that, Frank returned to the hotel, and there, he suddenly experienced a severe headache. Frank immediately called for help and asked him to contact his son, Joey. But when the helper opened Frank's cell phone, there was no contact with Joey. Frank asked the helper to see the call history because he had contacted Joey last night. But the helper still said there was no call history on Frank's cell phone. Not wanting to add to the headache of thinking about it, Frank asked the helper to leave because he was going to rest. Shortly after that, Frank had a woman guest. The woman pretended to be satisfying Frank. Frank even though she intended to rob all of Frank's money. Frank, who was not that stupid, immediately sent the woman away. Not long after, a man, a colleague of the woman came and immediately asked Frank to hand over all the money. But Frank is not an ordinary old grandfather but a former gangster. Frank quickly defeated the man. Frank, who still has a heart, does not finish the man, but drives him away. After that, Frank drove his car to find Joey's whereabouts. Arriving in the middle of the trip, Frank was contacted by Joey, who said he needed help. Joey also gave his location, so Frank immediately picked Joey up. Arriving there, Frank immediately entered the warehouse and found Joey injured. Joey didn't tell him what had happened, so Frank quickly took him to the hotel. The next day shows Joey, whose condition has begun to recover, but he still didn't want to say what had happened to him. In the end, Frank takes the initiative to take Joey on a pilgrimage to the grave of his late mother, and the goal is for Joey to be able to pour everything out there. But when at the grave, Frank was surprised when he saw his wife's grave next to which there was another grave bearing the name Joseph Carver, or Joey, his son. It was revealed that all this time, his son Joey had died in 2005. Joey, who always accompanied Frank, was only Frank's hallucination because he did not know that his son had died. Then Joey's shadow tells him that he was killed by Frank's colleague named Quentin. Joey also asked his father to let him go, so that Joey and his mother could be at peace in the afterlife. In the end, Frank promises that he will be sincere. Until then, they parted. After that, Frank took all the money he had left, and then hurried off to go to Simone, the woman he had dated. Frank gave all his money to Simone, then apologized if he would never return. After that, Frank immediately rushed to the gangster chief. Frank pretended to be visiting the chairman while carrying a gift parcel. Arriving at the room, it was seen that the chief gangster was lying unconscious. Frank then opened the gift, which turned out to be a baseball bat that the chairman had used to finish off his victims. Frank also intended to finish off the chairman with the baseball bat. Still, immediately he did not have the heart, because Frank had a principle not to attack helpless people. In the end, Frank put the baseball bat on the chairman's chest, and then he went to hunt down Jimmy. When Frank had just left the nursing home, Jimmy suddenly attacked Frank first, and there was a shootout. But because of Frank's skills and experience, Frank finally finished Jimmy. <laughs> After that, Frank rushed to Quentin's daughter's wedding. Apparently, Frank's arrival at the place was not to attend the party, but to ask why Quentin had the heart to kill Joey. Arriving there, Frank immediately shot Quentin and his daughter. Frank asked Quentin to explain why Quentin killed Joey. Quentin finally confessed and told everything. While Frank was in prison, Joey lived poorly. Every day, all Joey did was use drugs. Joey has become an addict. Every day, Joey always asks Quentin for money to buy drugs. Over time, Quentin and the organization became fed up, and there was no other way but to finish Joey off. Once again, Quentin apologized to Frank because of all of these events. Quentin with a very strong compulsion. After hearing all the explanations, Frank still intends to finish Quentin as revenge. But suddenly, Frank remembered the sin he had committed, so he immediately undid his intention. But when he arrived outside, it turned out that Frank was surrounded by several policemen. Apparently, when Frank shot Quentin earlier, some people immediately contacted the police. The police, who knew Frank was an ex-convict, immediately moved quickly to surround Frank. The police immediately warned Frank not to move if he didn't want to be shot. But Frank, who was fed up with his life, kept walking, so the police were forced to shoot Frank dead.
When he was on the verge of death, Frank was seen smiling happily because he saw Joey beside him. Then Frank breathed his last with a very happy feeling. And the movie is over. Don't forget to click subscribe, like, and comment.